Hello everybody, my name is James. Welcome to King's Fine Woodworking. Today we're going to show you how to build this long-awaited rocking chair version of our Adirondack chair. There are a number of critical parameters for a rocking chair. The radius of the rocker, the center of gravity of the chair, and the center of gravity of the chair with a person in it. These are all very important features to have a properly functioning and comfortable rocking chair. And after a number of prototypes, we have nailed it. This rocking chair rocks perfectly and maintains a perfect center of gravity and balance regardless of whether or not the occupant weighs 50 pounds or 500 pounds. So hopefully you like the build and uh, take a look. Okay, so before we jump into the build, I would like to announce a huge giveaway that we have. This giveaway includes a full set of wooden templates for this Adirondack rocker and our Adirondack chair, as well as comprehensive plans for both. So you'll be all set up to build your very own. Uh, the wooden templates I don't even sell. It's just a custom set that I am making on a CNC machine just for this prize. All you have to do is help me decide the winner of the Adirondack chair build off that we had. There's even a special gift that each of them have made in their shop that's going to go to the winner of this giveaway. So these two guys, the Crafty Wiener and RPG Woodworking and Design, have had a long-standing rivalry over several of their builds. They're in our King's Fine Woodworking community, and they just do fantastic work. So let me explain how this giveaway is going to work. I'm going to quickly show you two 60-second clips that they put together of their builds. Then all you'll need to do is go to each of their channels. The links are in the description down below. You'll need to like their video, and you'll need to subscribe to their channels. And then in their comments, you'll have to indicate whether they won first place or second place. We'll gather all of the names for everybody who did this, and we'll select a winner at random. And we will ship this prize anywhere in the world. Hello, King's Fine Woodworking. This is Ryan. Thank you, James, so much for allowing me to be a part of this build-off. The chair I built for the competition is made out of curly maple, uh, walnut, and, um, and then obviously I laminated the back uh, with walnut and maple. And here's a little clip of uh, me starting my project. All right, so there you have a little preview of both of their chair builds. So after you watch this video, if you want to head over to their channels, uh, make sure that you subscribe to their channels and leave a comment in their section whether you thought they won first place or second place. There is a link to their channels in the description below here. And if you do that, you'll be entered to win the grand prize of all the templates. Now on to our build. So we do offer a comprehensive set of 3D drawings uh, along with cut lists, uh, like a component breakdown of how to get the most efficient use of the pieces from a different pieces of wood, all the measurements, uh, grid so you can recreate these exact shapes. Uh, it's all set in our 20 page plans. The plans are really all you need to build the project, um, but in case you want extra and you don't want to have to loft up the uh, the plans to full size, we do sell full size, full scale templates. These come out folded in an envelope 
and this is actually what I'm going to use to build this chair with, uh, this rocking chair with. And it's pretty much the same principle that we did for the Adirondack chair. If you haven't seen that, I will put a link in the video down below and show you how that works. All the pieces are labeled if you get these templates and it makes it very easy to put it together. To start with, of course, all of these pieces need to be cut out. So I kind of separate the main pieces from the sheet and then I'll go back through and I'll carefully cut right down to the line. When you're done, you'll have a set of paper templates you can fold back up, stick in that envelope, and you can use uh, repeatedly for mini chairs if you like. You can actually take the template as well, just trace it right onto the wood itself directly. I like to do it this way. And uh, just, just get kind of an approximate uh, uh, trace here. It doesn't have to be exact. I'm going to actually cut this piece out by hand with uh, jigsaw and stuff. And I'm showing you uh, that you don't have to be perfect with all of these pieces at, for your chair to end up perfect. It's not that difficult. And then I'll go ahead and I'll chop this off just to an approximate size, which gives me an arm. This is the arm of the chair, which will allow me to put this together. So I'm going to cut this with the jigsaw. It's easiest if you can clamp it to a table or something stationary or have another person hold the board still for you. And that's it. You just kind of follow the line. I go close to the line, maybe not right all the way up to it. Maybe a, a 16th or a 32nd away from the line. Just, you know, approximate. It doesn't have to be exact. And we'll cut the piece out that way. It's a little slow going through some knots, but this whole thing's really done in real time. And I think it took me about a minute and a half or two minutes to uh, cut this piece out in its entirety. So it's not really a, not a bad process. And you, one of the nice things about this project is you don't have to have a full shop worth of tools in order to build it. If you start selling these things and make some money, you can certainly buy a bandsaw. You could even buy a CNC machine and cut those out on that. And Adirondack chairs are really hot sellers, especially uh, components or accessories that go with Adirondack chairs. Um, the footrests, tables, and Adirondack rockers as well. We sold so many Adirondack chairs over the years that uh, I was able to pay my uh, way through college doing woodworking, mostly with outdoor furniture and mostly with Adirondack chairs, tables, and the like. And a rocking chair is really kind of a deluxe addition to this lineup uh, because it sells for more. It's really not any more work to build than the chair. You can see that my cut there is actually pretty rough. And I'm going to show you that's really not a problem if the cut is rough. Uh, you can see that there's kind of a gouge there. I just have, I have a really cheap jigsaw, so it doesn't cut great anyway. But if I put some 60 grit sandpaper on, and it doesn't take long. You know, maybe 30 seconds and it just eats right through that and I end up with a nice smooth contour finish there. And pretty much every client who ends up buying an Adirondack chair or maybe every other client um, ends up wanting a rocker. <clears throat> they don't necessarily want a set of rockers, but one or two rockers is, is pretty popular. We sold the rockers for between 550 and 600, depending on what species of wood they were made out of. And I know wood prices have gone up today, but even if you stuck with that price, you could still make money, even though cedar and redwood and things have kind of skyrocketed. Uh, one of the guys in the build-off, Ryan from RPG Woodworks, as soon as he built his first Adirondack chair within a few weeks, uh, I think he sold over 20 of them. So it's something that, that's pretty popular. You know, if you, you can make a few hundred bucks in a chair and, um, uh, you know, you can outfit a shop with that and, and keep uh, uh, funding your woodworking. So once the, the sanding is done all the way around, then I like to take a router to the edges and I'll route both sides, the top and the bottom. And then we'll just hit it with that finer grit that I was talking about. Um, this will be like a 150 grit, and 150 grit will really finish it for an outdoor project. We want the pores to be a little bit open so that I can get an oil finish to penetrate deeply. And that's all there is to doing an arm, an Adirondack arm by hand. It doesn't take that much. The rest of the pieces I'll go ahead and cut out on the bandsaw, but uh, that's all there is to that. All right, so we're going to go ahead and lay out the back slats on a 2x12. If you can get a wider board like a 2x12, it's pretty handy because you can get a lot of back slats on it. Now what you're looking at is the side view, when you look at it from this point, the side view of the back slat. So the width of the back slat is the thickness of this piece, which is an inch and a half. And so we can use this to trace it out here. And I typically don't use a pencil because it can't be seen well. I like to use a ballpoint pen. 
uh, to lay out the back slats with. And that's what I would ordinarily do, but I'm going to pretend that I went ahead and made wooden templates. Wooden templates are very beneficial. If you're going to make a lot of chairs, take the time to make a full set of wooden templates that are very accurate, and you can use these forever. They never go bad. Now I'm going to jump up to a Sharpie, a permanent marker here, just for the purpose of, of the camera because it helps you to see the lines a lot easier than a pen, a ballpoint pen. Um, so I prefer ballpoint pens for a lot of the layout. They're, they're easier to see, but here again on camera I'm going to use this, this Sharpie and lay it out for you. Now you don't have to have a 2x12 and if you can't find 2x12s that's fine because in my uh, uh, cut sheet that's included in the plans. I'll show you how to lay it out and get everything out of two by sixes or even two by eights because some people simply can't get two by twelves based on where they're at, and that's fine. So anyway, we'll space these out just a little bit. Put about no, I don't know an eighth of an inch gap or so between these, and we'll just trace them out one at a time. And you can see we actually get quite a few back slats. Out of a 2x12. I think we only get two out of a 2x6, but we get six out of a 2x12. And there's even room to spare if you can see at the top here. So if you're lucky enough to have a CNC machine, if you start producing these things for a living, you can spread these out just a little bit more and you can have the CNC machine cut six of these out in one go. And that saves quite a bit of time. In fact, you sell six or seven chairs, the profit from those can buy a CNC. So here's the set of wooden templates that I was talking about that we're going to give away. And that's what I used for laying out and cutting all 38 pieces for the chair. These are the rockers. These are the back legs. These are the front legs. There are 13 back slats. And then we have the upper back cradle, the middle back cradle, which has a bevel on the front of it. It's the only piece that has a bevel on the front and the lower back cradle. What mates with that is the seat, the backmost seat slat. Then we have the eight intermediate seat slats, finally the front seat slat. This is the front cross piece. We have the arms and we have the two brackets. And the piece that isn't cut yet is the support that holds the back legs between the two rockers. So I didn't bother showing you how to cut all those pieces out on the bandsaw or the jigsaw. I figured you guys know how to do that stuff. We're just going to move right into the building and assembly phase here. We're going to start with the two rockers. I've mated them together and then I've laid them out in the opposite to show me that I have a left and a right. I'm going to put the template back on top of it. I'm going to mark the hole at the very back for the wheel. And this is where my cross brace is going to be that's going to carry the legs. And the back legs and this is the location at the front where the front legs are going to land on the rockers that's indicated on the template and of course it's indicated in the plan so now I'll put the two rockers back together make sure they line up at the front make sure that I can still see those two marks to show me where the front leg is going to come down on top of the rocker and we'll make that real clear this is really critical. This helps with the balance point of the whole chair. In fact, even moving it a quarter of an inch or a half an inch will change the balance of the chair. And I'll go ahead and draw a straight line across the two. That way I won't make any mistakes when putting the front leg onto the chair and everything will balance out just fine. All right, so now I'm gonna lay these down and you can see that there's a left and a right. And then we're going to go ahead and attach the front leg. So I've noted where it goes here. And this is the front leg. You see it slopes backwards at the back. And the front edge here needs to line up on the front edge of that line. Just like that. And let's, it's important to make it real accurate. I mean, if you're off by an eighth of an inch, it probably won't hurt. So ordinarily when you use one of these doweling jigs, you'll make that thing line up, but we're just going to line it up with the edge of the jig itself. Hope that made sense. Uh, you can do it any way you like. This is just what I like to do. I'm lined up with the edge of the jig itself right here. And I'll do the same thing on the leg. That way we know they're in the exact same spot. And I've put some tape to show me what depth that I want this at. I want it to go slightly deeper than about half the length of the dowel. And we'll just drill it straight in. So you could use a domino here if you have a domino jig. A uh, doweling jig also works fine. 
You can make a homemade dowling jig. You don't have to buy one. And so we can see that the slope goes to the back. So I want to go ahead and note that this is the front of the leg so I don't get confused later when, I'm, when I move to the assembly phase. And that makes this the front. And we know that has to line up with the other front. So I'm going to put that in my vise, or you could have somebody hold that for you. And we'll put the doweling jig on there. And again, we're not going to use the line on the inside of the doweling jig. We're just going to use the edge of the jig itself. The same exact thing that we did for the rocker. I'll show you what I'm talking about right here. The edge of the jig is going to line up right with the edge of the wood. And that's the front. And that's how we know that when we put this leg onto the rocker itself, it's going to line up just right. So we're going to do a little test and just make sure that this fits on the rocker nicely. Get some of the dust out there. Now if we ever mess up, it's no problem. We just put a dowel in the hole, glue it in, saw it off, and, and start over. But let's check it out here and see how it goes. Make sure the front goes to the front. And we'll slide it down there. And I'm spot on, so it's fine. Yeah, if I was an eighth of an inch or even a, you know, a little bit more than that, it's not really a problem, but we're, we're dead on, which is fine. All right, so now we need to mark the back. Now I'm just going to go ahead and draw a line about where I want the dowel to be. And now we're going to use the doweling jig the way it was intended to be used. Is we'll, uh, we'll use the line on the doweling jig and line it up with that, with that mark. Make sure we use the half inch hole. I do have half inch dowels here. I want this to be fairly rugged. And now you can see those lines there. I've got the line lined up and those are drilled. Now I want to point something out here to you. I did make a mistake the first time I did it and I put the hole in the wrong spot. It's not really a problem though. I uh, took a dowel, I glued it, I glued it in, I cut it off and sanded it flush. And you can see my mistake there. We're going to zoom in on that in about one second and let you take a close look. Right there. It's not going to make any difference. It's not going to affect the strength or integrity of the piece. And I do have the correct hole drilled right after it. So now we're going to test it and make sure that this fits. I was basically lining up on the wrong line on the doweling jig. And that's what happened to me. All right, so let's see. So yep, that went on good. And we're still lined up great. So that's it. That's all there is to it. And uh, you, you, my mistake was pretty much hidden by the uh, leg, so it's not really a noticeable issue. But I do want to mark these because they're going to be different, uh, the left one and the right one. So I'll just mark this with the letter A, and I'll mark the leg with the letter A. So we'll know when we get to the glue-up phase to glue A back to A. And this is the other one, so this one's marked X. And we're going to go ahead to the glue up. I want glue on all surfaces, on all surfaces of the dowel, and on the mating surfaces as well. And this dowel only represents, uh, these dowels only represent a part of the total strength of the attachment between the leg and the rocker. So we got to make sure we got front pointing to front again. So that's why I looked at the slope there. And we got to get it down and tap it in place. And then I'm going to take the time to clamp it up. <clears throat> I'm going to use some parallel clamps. You could use some uh, just regular bar clamps or whatever you have. But uh, this glue works best. All glue works best if you can apply some clamp pressure to it. And I think that's important. Uh, but I did say that I mentioned that the dowels were only part of the strength of this piece. And it would probably be fine if a lightweight person is going to get in it. It probably lasts forever. But if a heavier weight person is going to get in it, I would prefer to see something more and so we're going to put some screws in through the bottom now this is a very long drill bit i'm going to put some links to some of these longer drill bits down below it's called an aviation drill bit um, there you can get them 8 10 12 inches long and they're used for uh, things in the aviation industry where you have to drill things that are far away or a good distance so i've, I've put a, a pilot hole in all the way and i've used a slightly bigger bit now this is the, this bit's the size of the threads and this bit's only going to go through the rocker part that way I'm not tapping threads through the rocker part, uh, but I am tapping the threads into the leg part itself. And then I'm going to go ahead and use my countersink here. I'm, I'll leave the regular drill bit on the end of it. And the countersink will allow me to put a plug on the bottom of that if I want to do that. 
and allow me to get the head buried up inside just a little bit. And then I'm going to use these screws by GRK. They're number 12s, which are really big, by 5 and 5 eighths inch long. So they're going to go a few inches up into the leg. I've also drilled them a little bit to the inside of the two dowels, so they're not really going to hit the dowels much. And they're going to give us some pretty substantial grab. So we've got a giant mechanical fastener system here steel that's uh, significantly stronger than the dowels and they're going to they're going to hold the joint tight as well so once we get these in we don't really even have to leave the clamps on these will kind of serve as clamps to uh, allow that glue to dry but the combination of these two things makes me think that this chair would last for generations and generations you know the uh, the glue joint will never fail um, neither will the dowels but putting this on it uh, with continued rocking motion, even I don't think you're going to have any problems with this chair lasting forever. So I've cleaned up the glue squeeze out there and taken it apart, and that's what the front assembly looks like. Now we're going to route the front. I should have mentioned that at the very beginning, is I did, don't actually route the rocker and the front leg until after I glue them up. And the reason is just because it'll look a little bit better to route them as a unit. You'll see here when I get down to the corner, it makes them look like they're kind of made together. If you route them independently, uh, you know, before you put them together, then they won't look quite as neat here. They're not really critical, but you know, for looks, I think that's nice to do it this way. All right, then we're going to move on to some finish, and I like this Penafin penetrating oil finish. Uh, the same thing that I used on the Adirondack chair, and you guys might check out that video if you haven't seen it. Um, I go into even more detail in that video on exactly how to build that chair uh, and step by step. And this Penafin stuff I've been using for a really long time. It's, it's probably the best outdoor oil finish that I've ever used. I'm using a tan uh, cedar color for the upper part of the chair, and I'm using a redwood toned stuff for the lower part of the chair, even though all the wood is redwood. All right, so now it's time to do some assembly here of the legs, the back legs. So the front cross piece and the legs will join like this. However, the leg isn't straight to that. The leg is actually tilted in because the two legs come together. They're tilted towards the back at about six degrees. So I'm going to need to trim the front of this leg off to get a nice joint. And I'll show you how to do that. I've got to do the same thing to the other side, but in the opposite direction. Once I trim those off, then when I put the board back on it, it will give us that perfect tilt in. So what I want to do is I want to raise the leg up slowly while checking level on the saw side where it's going to be cut. And I've got a little board, a scrap board on the right. When I get the altitude just right, I'll go ahead and I'll clamp that leg up. And that holds the leg up at that exact height. Now I can just slide the leg back and forth, move it around as needed to get it in the right position to just saw the very tip of that off. i got to make sure I tilt my saw over there at that 6 degrees, 6 degree bevel to the back. And all that's shown in the plans as well. And I just want to verify that I'm cutting it right. So this is one of the legs. So, it's, um, so I, I noticed I had the saw tilted the wrong way. I'm going to tilt it the other way here. And I just want to re-verify, make sure I'm square, and it is. And I want to bring the saw down and I want to cut just barely right to the corner. So the back part of it is getting cut off more because it's a bevel, but I'm just coming right to the front corner. So I'm not really losing any total length on this leg. The legs retaining the same length, you know, out to the outermost point of the bevel. Hopefully that makes sense. We're just shaving just enough off to put that six degree bevel on. So obviously I'm cutting way too slow here. You probably won't cut quite that slow. But there we go, we'll take a look at that, and that's it, that's perfect. So you can take a look at that and see, I've cut that six degree bevel off. And then we're gonna do the same thing for the other leg. So we, it's easiest just to do this from the other side of the saw, because remember, this is a left and a right leg, so they do have to be cut opposite of one another. Same technique though, we'll put a scrap board, we'll raise that up to level, we'll clamp that board in, and that'll hold it in position for us to make this cut. Now I gotta rotate the miter on the saw over the other way, now you can also set the the table on a circular saw, a handheld circular saw, at six degrees and trim it that way as well. It might even be a little bit easier uh, than doing this. But the same deal here, we want to come right to the very front of the uh, piece of wood, but we don't want to cut any more off than we have to to get that bevel. And there we go. So now let's take a look. You can see now how the two of them 
point together. Now, we, since we did remove the, the oil off of the front of this, we got to put it back on. Even though it's going to be hidden, it's better to just go ahead and seal it up. Okay, so here is the front cross piece. And what I like to do, is, especially if there's not many people helping out in the shop, is uh, I'll tack them together with a gun. Uh, this is just a finish nailer. You can use a finish nailer, a pin nailer, whatever you want. We're going to follow up with screws anyhow. You want to make sure you don't shoot your fingers, so get those out of the way before you pull the trigger. You can have your fingers right where you want them uh, to line it up, but get them way back out of the way before you pull the trigger. Sometimes nails shoot out the side for no reason. All right, now we'll just line up the other side. We'll nail that together too, and that's really all there is to it. A couple of finished nails will hold it. We'll follow those up with screws. And we've got two sizes of screws. I got three inch. These are Deckmate deck screws and two and a half inch. I use these screws for everything. They're ceramic coated. They're almost impossible to break. So for this chair and the other chair, I always use the biggest screw that I can use. So if a, a three inch roll will fit, it, I'll use a three incher. And here it will. It's going to go all the way through. It's not going to stick out the other side. If I had two pieces of two by that are side by side and I'm going in sideways, then a three incher might poke through. So I'd have to drop to a two and a half. So just kind of use common sense. Use the longest screw that you can use without the screw sticking out of the other side. So I'll pre-drill first and then, then put the screw in. It's a number nine screw, so just get a number nine uh, countersink bit with pre-drill. And we'll do both sides. So these get held together with two three-inch deck screws on each side. Now we're going to take a look at the back. Now this is the lower back cradle. And if you take a look on the leg, this part of the leg, there's kind of a line here because it goes from you know the curve of the leg to the straight flat section where the cradle goes. And we just want to line the back of that up there. And we want to have the leg flush, of course, with the side. I'm just going to tack this in as well. Make sure it doesn't move. And we'll flip around the other side and tack that in. Now, it's never going to line up exactly perfect. So you got to kind of squeeze it in a little bit there. But it shouldn't take hardly any pressure at all because uh, yeah, as long as your cuts are accurate, it goes together pretty nice. So once that's tacked in, we're going to follow this up with a pair of screws. And here again, we're going to use 3-inch deck screws because they're not going to poke out of the other side. So we'll pre-drill first and follow that up with the screws. And that is the back leg section. Okay, so we'll take this rocker front leg combo piece, the two of them, and put them together. Make sure that uh, we have our left and our right. And if you look closely, you can see that I do have them marked on the inside here. This is where the back leg support goes. This is a cross piece that goes from one, one rocker to the other and carries the back legs. And it fits perfectly on there. We drew that on when we made it. Now I could just drill right from underneath here, but I wouldn't necessarily get it exactly in a good spot because I'd be kind of guessing or I'd have to measure. But if I do a little pre-drill through this side, put a pilot hole in, then I can center it real easy by sight because I can see where the perimeters of that square are, that rectangle are. I only come about three quarters of an inch to an inch in from each edge and keep in the center and that'll let me know. And then we'll go ahead and we're going to tack it together. Now it is angled like this, which is important because remember the rocker tapers in at six degrees. We go from the front to the back, the rocker tapers at six degrees. So it's got to go just right. So we'll tack this into place. Definitely helpful if you got a couple of hands here. One person can hold it right over those pencil marks. And you put a little, I put a little piece of wood under the rocker so it doesn't roll. Now these I'm going to use number 10 by four inch screws. These are GRK screws. I'm going to use a pair of them number 10 by 4 inch. Now here's that long drill bit again, pilot drill, and you can buy a set like this on Amazon for about $20. These, these, uh, these are actually brad points, which are really nice for woodworking. They're called aircraft bits. I'm going to go right in that hole that I pre-drilled through, and I've got it taped just past the 4 inch mark, so I know I'm not going to go too deep unnecessarily. And then I'm going to go ahead and put a countersink in there. I'll drill a countersink hole on both sides so that I can plug it if I want and it also allows me to get the head of the screw down below the surface. 
And then we'll put our four inch, our number 10 by four inch screws in. These have considerable strength. I think, you know, they hold uh, probably 500, 600, 700 pounds each. I, you can t it sells on the back of the GRK box, I don't recall, but they're very strong screws. Certainly will hold whatever weight we can put on them. And that's half of it. And then we'll do the same thing with the other half. Same sequence, we put it together after we had the holes pre-drilled and then we screwed it together and that's it. So the rocking section is complete. Now we're gonna mate the back leg section to the rocking and front leg section. So to do that, I'm gonna go ahead and loosen these screws because it helps this slide in a little bit easier. So I put them together because that's where they need to go, but I might need to squish this in just a little bit because of the angles that are happening. And since I've loosened those, now you can see it should slide right in. And then we'll push it back a little bit and push this up to the altitude that it needs to go. So what I did is I made a little jig and the jig is gonna be measured from this line, the seam between those two boards and the top of the cross piece. So if I hold that there and clamp it in place, this piece is five and 15 sixteenths of an inch long and I did put angles on it. They're not really necessary. They could could just be a piece that's square to square, but I, I followed the angle of the uh, of that front leg. And then we just bring the cross piece down to rest on it. And this way we know the cross piece is at the exact right altitude for the chair. And it's convenient because it'll kind of hold it in place for us while we drill. We don't want it flush with the front leg and that's what I'm checking with the red square there. And once I have it flush, I will go ahead and clamp that on so it doesn't move so we can drill it. Now I'm only gonna put a single hole here for now. It's gonna go right between those two screws and it's gonna go into the front cross piece. This leg is gonna be bolted on, but not quite yet. So we've pre-drilled it, and then we're gonna put a three inch screw. Again, we can use a three inch screw here because there's no danger of it poking out of the other side. Now we're just gonna repeat this exact same procedure on the other side to make sure the altitude is correct on the front cross piece over here. And the act of doing that squares up the chair. Once that's done, we're gonna to go to the back of the chair and we're just gonna put a single screw in here. This will be a three inch screw also. This is going through the back leg support into the back leg. And this is gonna hold that back leg there so it can't slide forward or backward. We're gonna do some more attachment, but uh, this is the first of them. And then we're gonna to go to the side of it and then through the rocker, we're gonna put a pair of screws there into the back leg. Now here's that instance where I told you we're going from a, uh, a two by four thickness to a two by four thickness basically and a three inch screw might poke out. So I'm going to use a two and a half inch screw here. So anytime you've got two, two uh, pieces of two by lumber side by side, a three inch screw could poke out, especially if it's countersunk. So in those instances, you should use a two and a half inch screw. Use a three when you can, use a two and a half otherwise. All right, once that's done, we can go ahead and put these back down. And they all went tracked right back in just fine, no problem. And of the five or six prototypes we built, I didn't have a problem, but in the event that you did, if that was a little bit, if sticking a little bit out from the legs, it would make no difference at all. All right, so that's the leg assembly. Now we're gonna get ready to put on the back slats. I'm putting this board in as just a, this little piece of plywood just as a temporary piece to hold the back slats. That way all the back slats, when they get to the bottom of this back piece, are at the same height. Now the back slats that go on the very edge are gonna be resting on the leg itself, the back leg itself. But the ones that go across the middle will rest on that piece of plywood. And here, we'll use a combination of uh, two and a half and three inch screws, just depending on where we're going. And what I've done is I, I drilled it out with a countersink, and then I used a slightly bigger drill to drill just through the two by piece of material itself, not into the, the backer, 
um, just to enlarge the hole a tiny bit so that I don't risk splitting it because I'm really close to the edge, really close to the edge of this back slat. So I'm going to do that with all the back slats all the way across. Pre-drill first with a normal pre-drill bit, then I'll use a slightly larger drill to about the size of the threads and drill that. All right, now we're going to put the middle back slat on. So I've measured and marked to the very center and we'll hold this in the very center and put it in. Once that's done, I just tend to take the first group of five and put it on the left and you see how handy that support board is now. Now these are all very, very close. So I'm really just going to eyeball these and uh, I'm just going to tack them in with my finish nailer. We'll tack the nail all the way down at the bottom, like kind of off to the side a little bit. So it's not in the way of the screw, but it's enough to hold it in place so that I can come back in and screw it. And that was that five. We're going to spread the, the top of these later. So now for now, we're only going to put the bottoms in. But we'll get a nice even spread on the top later. And then we'll put the other five in. We're going to do the exact same thing. Once they're all in, they're all tacked in. We're going to follow through with our drill, our pre-drill bit, and then our slightly larger drill bit, and then screws all the way across, and that's that. That's the back slats. Now once those back slats are all in, we no longer need this temporary support. It was just there to keep those all at the same height. They're all cut to the same length. And so if you put this in, then when you look at the, at the top of them all the way across, they're all at the same altitude, which looks nice. All right, now that that is done, we're going to move on to the arm. <clears throat> you can pick either arm first. It doesn't really make much difference. So I'm going to go ahead with the right arm of the chair here. And I've made a little jig here. It's two inches in front and one inch on the side. And so I put it up into the corner here on that uh, leg, that front leg. And what I want to do is I want to line it up so that the middle of the front is kind of flush with that uh, two inches out. So I basically want it two inches out. And then on the right hand side there, I want it to be one inch away from the leg. So in the front, two inches away, on the side, one inch away. And we're just going to put a single screw here because this arm's going to need to pivot back and forth in order to square up the structure from left to right before we bolt it together. So just a single screw. We'll do the same thing with a countersink and and use a three inch screw. And we'll do the other arm the exact same way. We've we'll got the two inch and the one inch. And you can see this thing will pivot here because the, the arm does have to kind of slant back a little bit. And when that goes down, we want to make sure that on the left, we're lined up so that we're about one inch away from the arm and the front, or from the leg. And then in the front, we want the middle of the arm. You see the whole thing doesn't line up in the front. We just want the middle of it to be lined up with that uh, two inch mark. So about like that. And we'll put that in, same thing. All right, then we're going to move to the back of the chair once the front two screws are in on that arm. And we'll go to one side first. doesn't matter which side. The back pieces are kind of all running wild. We'll tack it in with a couple of nails. And we'll go to the other side. We'll squeeze that forward. It might move a few of them uh, back slats forward out of our way. No big deal. We'll come back and screw those in in a little bit. But we'll do the same technique and tack that in there. And then before we get to bolting or screwing or anything, what we need to do is check to make sure that this is square because the whole thing could be pivoted off to the left or off to the right. And so Psy is taking a tape measure and measuring. I've got a plumb bob coming down from the side of the arm and she's giving us a distance there. I think that's about four and seven eighths on that side. And then we're gonna match it on this side. So it's important for this to be square because it's gonna make it look nice. You don't want your chair to look funny. And your measurements may be different. That doesn't matter. What matters is that they're the same. And here we have a lot less, maybe four and an eighth. So clearly this upper back assembly, this middle back assembly, has got to scoot to the left. So I'm going to tap that to the left a little bit. And we'll take another measurement. And we've got to get that uh, the plumb bob, makeshift plumb bob there, all straight and situated so it's not moving around. And looks like maybe about four and five eighths that side. Let's check the other side. We'll wait for that thing to come to a stop and we'll get a measurement on that. 
Yeah, it looks like we got the same, about four and five eighths on that side. All right, so the back assembly is now square. So we want to hold it. We've got to support it in order to drill some holes and put some bolts into it. If you push down, you're just going to tear the screw out of the front that's going into the front arm because it's just one screw. So I've used a 3 8 inch drill bit because we're going to use some 3 8 inch bolts. You can get galvanized bolts. Uh, I just have zinc bolts here. Zinc bolts last a long time. Um, they're probably not quite as good as galvanized, but I couldn't find galvanized when I built this. I, I used galvanized for the Adirondack chair that I built for a client in the last video build. Uh, so anyways, we're going to put a washer and then a lock washer because we don't want these to come off in the future. And then, of course, follow that up with a nut. And you can see how all that goes together. And then it helps if you do have a drill or an impact driver. And you can put a little adapter to like a 3 8 inch socket on that. And you can just drive that right in. So I like to drive it in until one of the washers sucks into the wood and the top sucks into the wood just a little bit. That gets it nice and secure. Then we'll go ahead and put a second hole here. And back slats are kind of in the way. Push them out of your way. Uh, we're going to get two holes on each side because we don't want this thing to rack back to back. Once that's done, we're going to move to the leg. So we did actually both backs, both sides of the back on the uh, um, middle uh, uh, back cradle. And then we'll move to the leg. So on the front leg here, we've got to have to bolt, have a bolt up high and we'll have a bolt down low. And that's going to secure the, uh, the front leg to the back leg. This is a critical step. This makes this rocker really, really strong. Same thing here. It's a three, uh, three eighths inch bolt and we use a washer and then a lock washer and a nut and we'll screw it down until it compresses the wood a little bit and pulls the washer and the bolt head in just a little bit. I like to use a carriage bolt. It pulls in nicely and grips the wood real well. You can see just about how deep I'm putting that. The washer is getting pulled into the wood a little bit. That way we know it's good and secure and the lock washer gets flattened out. So that's what that should look like. So now we know that the uh, arm and up middle back cradle assembly isn't going anywhere. We're going to go ahead and put all the screws and the bracket in the arm. And that will finish solidifying up the structure. Again, we want to pre-drill and then we'll put some screws in. Those are three inch screws that go through there since they're not going to poke out. And then we'll put the bracket in. <clears throat> you notice that uh, since everything is leaning at an angle, the bracket doesn't really go in square to the leg. It's not really a big deal. It's still exactly the same strength. Uh, you just want it flush against the leg and you want it flush against the top, the arm. I like to tack that in and we'll come in and put some screws. Now you'll see only a two and a half inch screw is going to fit here because if you do anything longer, it's probably going to poke through. So we'll pre-drill. And every so often, you know, if your wood's really dry, you might split one of these brackets. So it's always a good practice to make an extra. I like to make an extra back slat when I'm making a chair and an extra bracket. Those are a couple of the pieces that tend to want to crack or break on you. So we got two screws holding the bracket to the leg and one screw holding the bracket to the arm. So it's a total of five screws at this junction and that really makes it quite strong. I just want to give a quick shout out to all the members of the King's Fine Woodworking community on Facebook. It's a great place where you can share your work and see the work of others. Uh, you can get help with projects that you're on or even help others with projects if that's something you like to do. It's also a great resource with lots of valuable information. I'll put a link to that in the description below in case you're interested. Now I want to mark where I'm going to put the screws for the center. This is the off cut piece that came from cutting the bevel off of this middle back cradle so the arc of the curve matches that perfectly. And here I can get a nice straight line so that all my screws line up. And so it's handy to keep that around until you're ready to draw this line. Since that's a, an inner arc, it's a little bit hard to snap a chalk line because it wouldn't necessarily follow that uh, the arc of that curve. So the only one I want to put in first is the middle one. I want to secure the middle one and that's it for now. And I'll show you why that is in just a second. We're going to hop to the back and we're going to put the upper back cradle on now. So I like this to be about two inches down from the top. 
And then I'm going to go ahead and just clamp this piece on to this outermost uh, back, uh, back, back slat. And then we're going to go ahead and individually space all these guys in the middle here. We'll space them out to where we think they ought to go, and then we'll go ahead and uh, put screws in and, and position them up just right. So the first one I like to do is the middle one, since the middle one is already stabilized because I put the middle screw into that back slat already. And I am following that pre-drill up with that slightly bigger drill bit again. The bigger drill bit, if you remember, is the size of the threads on the screw. That way we don't get a lot of force on this relatively narrow back slat and you know, have it tend to crack after getting 13 screws in it all in one line. Once the middle one's done, we'll just finish up all the rest the same way. Pre-drill, then drill with the bigger bit, and insert all of the screws. Then we can hop back around to the front of the chair again. And we can finish the same sequence, putting the back slats into the middle back cradle. If we follow our line nicely, then we'll have a nice neat screw line to look at when it's all done. That would be especially good looking if you were to plug these. I don't typically tend to do that if I use uh, an outdoor wood like cedar or redwood. Okay, then we're going to move on to the seat slats. The first seat slat is designated just for the back. It's specially cut to fit that contour. And then we have a series of eight pieces of just straight seat slats, inch and a half wide, and they're all, all longer than they need to be. I cut those about 24 inches or so um, because I want to trace them and I want to cut them exact. So I don't really even have measurements for what they're, they're going to be. I just know that they're all long. And then I'll put in little spacers. These spacers are an eighth of an inch. That way everything is uniformly spaced. Once that's done, we'll hold them down snug and I'll take a pencil and we're going to trace on both sides where to cut these, th these things off at. That way we get a more exact fit and it looks nice. And we'll either take them to the circular saw or the chop saw and we'll cut off one edge. Now that should be at six degrees because that's the, the slope that the, the chair slopes back at. Remember the back is six degrees narrower you know, than the front. We'll cut one side and then I move the, uh, the bevel cut over to six degrees the other way and I'm cutting the other side pieces. And then Sai is going to hold them down for me with her feet. She's standing up there uh, just so that I can router the edges. I routed the sides, uh, like the front and back of them, when we uh, originally routed everything but uh, didn't bother routing the sides because I knew I was going to chop them off. And of course these are still bare now since uh, they, we've cut off the end that might have had any oil on it. So we'll go ahead and put some penifin on those to protect them and then we'll proceed to install them. So I'm going to start with the back slat. We'll pre-drill and screw that down. I'm going to do the same thing here because these slats are relatively thin and they might split. So I'm doing the regular pre-drill and then I'm doing the drill with the slightly bigger bit, the one that's the size of the outer part of the diameter of the threads. Okay, and then I'll put all these in. They get bigger all the way up there. Now the one closest to the front I couldn't trace. I did have to measure that one. Uh, but once we set all these in, then we're going to go ahead and put these uh, spacers in. I'm going to put the spacers to the side so they're not really in my way when I'm screwing and drilling, and I can pull them out easier. And so Sai's just going to stand on the top, and she's going to do all the pre-drilling for me. And then we're going to screw them down. I typically do one side and then jump over to the other side, but you can do it in whatever order you like. It doesn't make any difference. Of course, with two people, it goes really fast, but you know, not a lot of us have two people in the shop. I'm very lucky. My daughters are often with me, um, or at least one, usually, and we get uh, work done a little bit quicker that way. And finally, we will screw in the very frontmost seat slat. That's a specially cut slat. It's designated separately in the plans because it's just a little bit wider than the others. And there you have it. There's the seat slats. So the chair's basically done except I'm going to put on the wheels. So we marked those slots, those holes, uh, I mean, for where the wheels go. And I've just got a 5 16 inch uh, bolt, hex head bolt. And then I put a washer. You might need a couple of washers, but that works. And then um, washer on the other side, and then we have to put on a nut.
There you go. Now the best thing to have here would be a lock nut. I couldn't find any lock nuts. Lock nuts are great. So what I had to do is put two nuts together and kind of create my own lock, but it works just fine. Of course, we have a lock nut. Just one is all you need. Well, that's the video. I hope you guys enjoyed watching it. I hope you'll go and check out my Adirondack chair build, which is a very popular and high money making build. Uh, I'll put a link to that in the description below. And if you like the work we do, we'd really appreciate it if you took the time to subscribe to our channel. It's how we grow and, uh, and you know, make a living off of YouTube trying to put out videos that people like to watch. So we'd really appreciate that. And you can even share this if uh, you think any of your friends or family on Facebook might be interested in seeing it or, or building one. There you have it. Thanks again.